Hang me, oh hang me I'll be dead and gone Okay, so here it goes. I spent a lot of my younger life quite reclusively, and it wasn't until university did I start to build meaningful relationships. But then I became completely disillusioned by this one goal I had since I was 12 to pursue filmmaking because I realised I had practically devoted all my time to this one thing, missed out on so many other important experiences in life, and it clearly wasn't making me happy. All around Cape Jordan, parts of Arkansas. In January 2014, shortly after my 20th birthday, a friend and I went to a relatively empty screening of the Coen Brothers Inside Lewin Davis without having any idea what it was about. And for the record, I did lose a bet over the origins of the name Lewin. It's Welsh. Yeah, 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 I know it's bloody Welsh. I had been demotivated and emotionally hollow for just over a year at this point, as everything I had hoped to achieve started to grow further and further apart from me, and this vision I had for my future became increasingly obscure that it left me feeling totally directionless. And I didn't know why. Then, after seeing the film, it became a form of clarity for me because it revitalized my perspective on life through a perfectly communicated understanding of that overwhelming absence I was currently experiencing. Now, I only speak exclusively for myself because everybody deals with their own health differently, but associating depression with sadness always felt extremely disingenuous to me. Before I go any further, I'm not looking to pander a sob story. I realize a lot of my viewers have personally messaged me in the past because I'm usually pretty open about my feelings, so take this video as my response to why art and free thought mean so much to me and why I make these videos. To myself, depression is a state of emptiness and incompleteness. Things just don't align like they used to and everything feels emotionally, physically and even aesthetically numb as if colour had been drained out of the world and I had become part of some crappy black and white French film. It's a feeling that's instantly captured and contextualised greatly by Inside Lewin Davis, including the journey itself which, just for context, is about the week in the life of a struggling musician trying to get his big break in the 1960s folk scene. Not really. With Lewin, not only is it a literal cycle he feels destined to keep spiralling in forever, but he persistently keeps asking the question, what are you doing? Except he doesn't have an answer for it, nor does he ever obtain one. Okay, so that's it. And I deeply appreciate that. If Lewin was to finally get that success, or in fact any sort of conclusion, it would completely defeat the purpose of what the artist's journey is really like. And that goes for any goal-driven journey in general. How's the music going? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. The film takes place entirely from the cynical shoes of Lewin, as he refuses to proactively confront his fears, which grow increasingly real as the film shifts tonally towards something more nightmarish. The overarching conflict of his character is that he thinks he's meaningless without his art, and gets frustrated at the idea of calling quits, despite his art ironically alienating him from having a meaningful relationship with the rest of the world. If the music's not... What? Quit? Merchant Marine again? Just... Exist? <laughs> exist? <laughs> Is that what we do outside of show business? It's not so bad, existing. Like Dad? Lewin. What? You say that about your own father. What? That he exists? I didn't say it. You said it. I... That he Forget exists? It. Like that? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. And at that point, what struck me the most was that I saw way too much of myself in Lewin. The key thing is, every problem he encounters has less to do with his work and more to do with personal circumstances he feels a constant need to ignore and disassociate himself from because they remind him of how trapped and directionless he feels in life and he doesn't want to admit that. Like his ailing father for example, who built a legacy across the country but has ultimately withered away to nothing. Instead of being there for his father, it leaves him selfishly afraid at the idea that this is his future, but without any sort of legacy. Wow. Like Lewin, I became self-obsessed with how I felt and what I wanted that I was stuck in a depression and just apathy towards everyone else around me. But despite the lack of pity given to Lewin's behaviour by the narrative, because at the end of the day, this is not a fair world, it's still understandably and sympathetically presented. 
Out of context, he's perceived as an asshole, but speaking from my own experiences, he doesn't mean to be. He's desperate, impatient, feels entitled because he's worked hard not to obtain the respect and success he deserves, and he simply envies that the rest of the world flies by him and he's getting nowhere. Sure is bullshit. It's an honest and rational response to his situation, and he just naturally blurts out a lot of genuinely humanized frustration because it's his way of relieving stress towards a world that seems to play against him, despite having no actual intention of hurting anyone's feelings. Hey look, I'm happy for the gig, but who, who wrote this? I did. Look, everybody thinks they're a goody two-shoes, but self-reflectively, everybody has that flawed, conflicted selfishness within them, and I think we all experience bad outward phases like this, so calling him a bad person like a lot of audiences and critics did just seems like self-grandeur and a lack of actual self-awareness. Why not? Of course, you have people like Troy, charming, humble, happy-go-lucky folk who are granted and honestly deserve great things, kind of like my friend who was sitting next to me, the smug but. So anyway, Lewin's hostility towards people like Troy feels honest because he's jealous that he can't have the same positive, passionate energy to not let small things impact his abilities. Lewin is passionate about his art, but he clearly doesn't like doing it anymore despite wanting to. Something he once loved has completely worn him out. Oh, you know what? This is bullshit. I'm sorry. This is... I don't do this, okay? I do this for a living. It's not a... It's not a... Fucking parlor game. Lewin, please, that's unfair to Lewin. This is bullshit. I don't ask you over for dinner and then suggest you give a lecture on the peoples of Mesoamerica or whatever your pre-Columbian shit is. This is my job. This is how I pay the fucking rent. Just a quick side note, there are some people out there that will never understand art as more than just for fun, especially those that go, ooh, it's not a real job, which to that I say, fuck you. But that's a different story for a different day. Back to the video. When Lewin starts his journey to Chicago, he carpools with a beat poet called Johnny Five and a jazz musician called Roland Turner. Very quickly does he realize he mirrors a lot of both men, especially Roland, who claims it's the world's fault that they just don't get him and blames that on his lack of success. But ultimately, he's now just at the point of delusion as opposed to accepting that he's not what the market wants. Hey, Mr. Turner, I'm wondering, huh? would that cane fit all the way up your ass? Or would a little bit stay sticking out? Both men clearly love their art, but are also clearly not happy people. Their suffering for their art has only aged them, demoralized them, and is practically on the brink of destroying them, forcing Lewin to consider if he really wants to suffer into old age or just abandon his livelihood altogether to find some form of peace and comfort. So I guess now is probably the time I told you the lesson I learned. I don't really subscribe entirely to motivational bullshit, but I am inspired by other people sharing their experiences, and you can see something deeply personal within what the Coen brothers have to say. The sense of hope that they project is that they don't let Lewin ever become defeated. Despite all the misery and obstacles, he gets right back up and keeps grinding through rain, sleet and snow in the hopes he'll make it to where he wants to be, even if that means trying and trying again. Failure is a persistent cycle that hurts incredibly deeply, but it's a necessary and integral part of life. Looking back on it, if I never embraced failure, I probably would have become self-delusional and alienating like Roland. Depression is never directly addressed in the film, but there is a profound willingness given to our lack of immunity towards weakness and failure. The problems Lewin is running from eventually catch up with him, and by that point, he rightfully chooses to acknowledge it. I'm sorry, thanks for the thought, but uh, it's not going anywhere. I'm tired. You're tired? Uh, I'm so fucking tired. I thought I just needed a night's sleep, but it's, it's more than that. But thank you for trying. Amy Kleon perfectly encapsulated Lewin as a figure of millennial malaise. It dismantles a myth we're led to believe that our hard work and grind to showcase our talents should equate to success, which is especially clear when Lewin gives a beautiful hair-raising performance to impress talent artist Bud Grossman, only to get shrugged off as unremarkable. 
I don't see a lot of money here. Okay. But that's okay because you're not in this journey alone. Everybody that Lewin meets becomes a small part of him, whether it be for better or worse. For every cautionary teal, there's someone in Lewin's life willing to accept him, even if they don't entirely get him. What eats away at me regularly is the uncertainty of what happens next in life. But there is relief in embracing the bigger picture I had already painted for myself with those around me, as opposed to neglecting it altogether to fix it on something that ultimately spiraled me down into the darkest moment in my life. The moment I stopped enjoying what I was doing, it became effort fueled by stubbornness, misery, and just plain meaninglessness. I don't think depression is something that ever truly goes away, but I have accepted it as part of me, and that makes me feel better equipped to cope with uncertainty because I can take the time to relate and connect with people, share that compassion, and walk through these difficulties with them. Life isn't a solo mission where ignorance is bliss like in Lewin's case or that of my former and I guess at the minute my current self. Instead, I try to view life as a collaboration within a shared existence. So when life hits you hard, grasping support and taking the time to focus on your health and happiness helps you get right back up and hit life back even harder. Hang me, oh hang me I'll be dead and gone Hang me, oh hang me I'll be dead and gone I wouldn't mind the hanging But the laying in the grave